everyone, and welcome to Florida Atlantic University's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. In today's presentation, you will be learning how to become a participant in the land-based dolphin spotter citizen science project. Let's get started. Located in Fort Pierce, Florida, FAU Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute has been a leader in marine science since 1971. Today, over 300 ocean scientists, educators, staff, and students continue to work toward the goal of ocean science for a better world. Marine mammal research and conservation is an important part of what we do here at FAU Harbor Branch. Researchers are studying various species from pole to pole, such as manatees, dolphins, beluga whales, and more. Dolphins are marine mammals, meaning they breathe air, have hair, give live birth, and nurse their young. They live for over 40 years and on average weigh almost 700 pounds. Bottlenose dolphins are recognized as sentinels of ecosystem health because of their higher position within trophic levels and long lifespans. They are even known to eat some of the same fish that we eat. Understanding these relationships and habitat use is paramount to understanding the role of these important marine mammals within an estuarine system. FAU Harbor Branch has been studying the Indian River Lagoon dolphin population for three decades and the Marine Mammal Stranding and Population Assessment Team is conducting a comprehensive photo identification study of the dolphin population in the Indian River Lagoon and Atlantic Ocean. Just like humans can be identified based on their unique fingerprints, our photo ID team can catalog dolphins by the scars, nicks, and notches on their dorsal fin. These patterns can be caused by both natural events like shark encounters or aging, and human impacts like boat strikes or entanglements. This makes every dorsal fin unique, so the photos we take can be used for identification and tracking over time. Once identified, each dolphin is given a four-lettered code or nickname. The population assessment team conducts monthly boat-based photo ID surveys using a high-powered camera to document bottlenose dolphins along designated transects of the Indian River Lagoon. Using methods like photo identification during line transect surveys and opportunistic effort, the team can gather valuable information about dolphin health, life history by observing mother and calf relationships, occurrences of human interactions like entanglements and boat strikes, even how harmful algal blooms affect dolphins in the lagoon and Atlantic Ocean, as well as accumulating baseline data. Photographing every dolphin in every part of the lagoon isn't possible or realistic. There simply is just not enough time or manpower for our team to document each individual dolphin. Therefore, we need your help to look in places where our boat-based surveys can't reach by participating in our new land-based Dolphin Spotter Citizen Science Project. A citizen scientist is anyone in the general public that collects information and or data to help with scientific research. Some of the goals of Dolphin Spotter are to help fill in the gaps along coastlines and shallow areas where the boat-based surveys do not reach, and to educate the public about the wild dolphin population in Florida. Through this initiative, we are encouraging members of the public, like you, to submit observations and photos taken on personal cameras while viewing dolphins from land. This means that taking photos from boats and kayaks or using drones is not allowed. As we receive sightings, the interactive map on the website is updated, and so far we have over 160 sightings from Merritt Island to Stewart, and even as far west as St. Petersburg. You can help to fill in those gaps by becoming a dolphin spotter today. Dolphin spotter submissions have documented dolphins in various location types, such as waterfront parks, canals behind private residences, marinas, and inlets. Spotters have observed several behaviors like traveling and probable feeding, and are helping to gain insights into life history by submitting images of mother and calf pairs. Citizen scientists have even documented human interaction like previous entanglement wounds. Images of known individuals will help provide information of home ranges, like this dolphin that was spotted at the same location multiple times within a five-day time frame. Our photo ID team has been able to match several dolphins to their database, including Summer, which was a dolphin that became tidally stranded in 2021 and was rescued by our team. Milky Way was seen with evidence of lobomycosis, known as a fungal infection that can be seen on the skin. These last two dolphins, Spoiler and Chopper, have each been sighted more than once by different dolphin spotters. Another way you can participate in Dolphin Spotter is by hosting a spotting station. This part of the Dolphin Spotter program encourages waterfront property owners to place a trail camera along their dock, tree, or post that is at water level to ensure 24-7 monitoring of dolphins in certain areas of the lagoon. If this interests you, refer to the spotting station section on the Dolphin Spotter website. 
Now that you are familiar with the program, I am going to walk you step by step on how to participate as a dolphin spotter. After you finish this video, you must fill out the rest of the registration form. You will then complete a short quiz that addresses important topics in this video and fill out information about yourself and initial all attestations in order to move on. By participating in this program, you must agree to follow all laws and regulations stated under the Marine Mammal Protection Act and only take photos of dolphins from land. To observe these animals in a way that is safe for them and for you, make sure you understand the rules and regulations communicated in this presentation. You must attest that you will follow all these laws and guidelines stated within Marine Mammal Protection Act. Do not feed or attempt to feed any marine mammals. This is extremely harmful to them and illegal. Do not swim with, ride, touch, or attempt to interact with marine mammals in the wild. Boaters should never approach and must remain at least 50 yards away from dolphins, which is about half of a football field. However, this rule does not apply to land-based viewers like the dolphin spotters participating in our program. In any case, be sure not to disturb the animals while photographing them. Report animals that appear injured or sick. If you think an animal is in trouble, if it is entangled, stranded, sick, or injured, please keep your distance and immediately report it to Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission by calling 888-404-3922. We strongly encourage you to read more information about viewing guidelines as well as the laws and policies in the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Once you have filled out the attestations and provided your information, registration is complete. You will receive an email that contains information on the Watch Spotter app you will need to download to submit sightings. You will also need the project code for the app to access the Dolphin Spotter portal, which is included in this email. You may want to save this email so you can refer to the project code in case you forget it. You are now ready to start spotting dolphins. Before you go out, you will need to bring a few things. We recommend you bring a hat, sunglasses, plenty of water, and a camera on your surveys. Be aware of your surroundings, respect all posted signs, and do not enter private property without permission. Always be mindful of your safety and avoid dangerous situations, especially when along the shoreline. Now that you are ready to observe dolphins, some great places to visit are neighborhood canals, marinas, public parks, under bridges, and along inlets. These are all great examples of locations where you can safely view dolphins from land. Keep the location type you chose in mind, as you will need to record it in the app submission page. There are two useful ways that our team can identify dolphins. First, by simply having a photo of a dolphin in an area helps us to better understand things like habitat use. The second way is to take a high quality image of the dorsal fin for individual identification. The following are some helpful tips and tricks to obtaining those quality images. The best way to take photos of dolphins from land is to use a good quality camera. A phone can work for animals closer to shore, but will most likely come out to be very blurry for dolphins that are far away. When taking photos of dolphins, try to obtain images that provide a full view of the side of the dorsal fin. Clear images that show the nicks and notches in detail allow our researchers to identify the individuals in the photos. After you have taken your photos, you are ready to start submitting dolphin sightings. Once you have downloaded the WatchSpotter app and have entered the project ID, this is what the home screen on the app will look like. Before you can add a new spot, you must log in to the app or create an account if you haven't already. Click sign in slash register and fill out the designated boxes. The display name is your username, and that will be visible on your submitted spots. To learn more about how to use the app, as well as helpful tips and tricks to adding a sighting, check out the Quick Reference Guide on the Watch Spotter website. At the bottom of the home page, click Quick Reference Guide mobile app. On the Quick Reference Guide page, you will find information about the app as well as a short video showing users how to navigate through the app itself. Once you have logged into the app and entered the project code, click on the three horizontal bars in the top right corner of the app. The field guide, which is located here, has a lot of helpful resources and links for spotters to use. For example, users can find the FWC Wildlife Alert Hotline in case they encounter an injured, sick, or stranded marine animal. The registration video is also linked in case spotters need a refresher. Contact information and other opportunities are listed under the field guide as well, so be sure to check it out. 
Let's walk through what kind of information we want you to capture while out on a survey. It is important to note that you will need to submit a new sighting if your location has changed between sightings, you observe dolphins on multiple days, or the time between two separate observations is longer than one hour. Keep in mind, the questions that have an asterisk are required for submission. First, you will select the category of the submission, which is either dolphin spotter or spotting stations. Next, you will need to select the spot type, like marina, public park, private residence, etc. Under location, select what city you observe the dolphins in. If it is not listed, select Other, and type the city in the Notes section. Next, you will need to know the sighting date and time. The app will automatically have the correct date and time populated, as well as your current latitude and longitude. If you are inputting a sighting from a different day or time, you can manually change the date information as well as the latitude and longitude. Just simply delete what is already there and input the new date and time. To change the latitude and longitude, press and hold your location crosshair icon in the app and drag it to where you spotted the dolphins on the map. Then click Add Spot. The second page on the form asks that you provide an estimate of how many dolphins were spotted during your survey. If you are unsure, record the minimum number of individuals you know you spotted or have pictures of. It may be difficult to see based on location, but if you spot any calves or baby dolphins, record an estimate of how many were present. Dolphin calves are between 3 and 4 feet in length when they are born, and from this picture you can see that they are typically seen swimming directly next to their mothers, and their dorsal fins are visibly smaller. During surveys, our population assessment team takes note of specific behaviors that they observe. It may be hard to determine what behaviors the dolphins are exhibiting, but if you happen to see an obvious behavior, you are encouraged to indicate that. Behaviors include feeding, probable feeding, traveling, milling, which is non-directional travel, and social behavior or play. There are some questions on the form that are not required, but would be useful for our researchers to know. Therefore, if you are able to record any extra information during your sightings, it would be greatly appreciated by our team. We ask that you provide information about the weather conditions during your sightings. Some examples of conditions found on the form include sunny, windy, cloudy, and rainy. It is also important to observe how rough or calm the water is. Is there low wave action or is there high wave action? Any additional comments or notes you may have about your sighting can be recorded at the end of the sighting form. Some other things we are looking for include information about the water visibility. You can simply indicate whether the water visibility is poor, meaning it is very difficult to see anything under the surface of the water. If it is fair, you can see objects just below the surface or in shallow areas. And lastly, if it is clear, you can see objects easily underwater and can clearly see to the bottom. Our team also documents potential human interaction. So try and keep in mind how many boats are present in the area or if people are fishing when you spotted the dolphins. We would like to recognize your submitted photos and ask that you choose how you would like to receive credit. If you prefer to remain anonymous, choose a third option. If you don't mind your photos and first name being shared, choose the second option. Lastly, if you don't mind us sharing your photos and full name, choose the first option. This brings us to step three of the form, which is where you'll submit photos. You can upload up to three high quality photos with the maximum file size being three megabytes. After uploading your pictures of dolphins, press submit to complete your sighting. Please fill out another sighting if you observe dolphins again after one hour at the same location, if your location has changed, or you make observations on different dates. Once you have submitted your sightings, be sure to check the interactive map on the website or in the mobile app to see them. All of the images that we receive are shared with the FAU Harbor Branch photo identification team, who will cross-reference them with their dolphin database to see if the dolphin pictured matches one of their known individuals. As matches are confirmed, the sighting is updated to include the dolphin's name. You can find this information under the Spot Details section on your map. In addition, users can click on any point on the map to view all of the details from a particular sighting, even those submitted by other dolphin spotters. This is a great way to find out where local dolphins are being sighted, especially if you're not sure where to look or want to try out a new spotting location. To take a closer look at these trends, spotters can click the three bars on the upper right and select Recent Spot to see our latest sightings. 
This can be helpful since dolphins travel quite a bit throughout the day or during different seasons. We look forward to seeing your submissions and encourage everyone to report sightings as often as you would like. This project was supported by the Protect Wild Dolphins Florida Specialty License Plate, which is administered by the Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute Foundation. You can support dolphin research and education programs by purchasing a plate online or from your local tax collector's office. Thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial video about our Dolphin Spotter Citizen Science Project. For more information on this project, as well as ways that you can support research and education at FAU Harbor Branch, please visit our website at www.fau.edu hboi. Thank you for your participation and happy dolphin spotting!